third. Ovet in fourth place, and he's watching Coe like a hawk. Just tracking Coe all the way. And the pace is very slow indeed. It's going to be left to the fast men, as we suspected, in the closing stages. No one wants to sacrifice the chance of a medal. There's no front runner involved in this race at all. They're coming round now to the spot where they finish in three laps time. Stravi's Germany leading, and it really is a job. Sebastian Coe in second place. Marijo is third. Steve Cram on the curb in fourth place. Fifth place is Fontanella. Steve Avet now back in sixth. And right at the back at the moment, Joe Clatchy of Czechoslovakia. Coming up to complete the first lap. 61, almost 62 seconds. And Steve Avet moving through to cover Sebastian Coe. We're still watching uh, Avet. What's the number 296, who was fifth in the 800 meter final? Coe just checking where everyone is, but uh, he's being stalked by Ovet. And they seem to be going even slower. So it's turning really into a half mile race. We're back where we were several days ago. Straub, where he's been all the time, running the curb. He was drawn on the inside and forced into that position. But he's no intention of driving for home yet. Sebastian Coe has shown he can go alone in his world record races. And the three Britons together, two, three, and four. Fontanella oh. boxed on the curb. Rakovic uh, next to back with Plachy. The Britons are in the right place there. They're all able to cover any attack at this moment. Running two, three, and four. 800 meters, two minutes, five seconds. So it was slower. Now Straub can't wait any longer. He knows the Britons have got the finish, so he's got to go. And Straub now makes the strike for home. Just over a lap and a half left, and he's stretching away from the others. Sebastian Cohen, second place, looking very comfortable. Over watching Coe all the time. Wussler coming up into fourth place. Fifth is Fontanella of Italy. And they're stretching out now. There's about uh, 10, 12 metres between first and last. And Stevie Kram has lost his place and is three from the back. But Coe second. And Ovet third, following the East German's pace as they come to the bell. East Germany one, Britain two and three, East Germany four, Italy five, France six, Great Britain seven, Yugoslavia eight, Czechoslovakia nine. The long run for home is on. Straub kicking again. Just over 300 to go. Cohen second place, Ovet is third. Busser still fourth, Marijo five, Fontanella six, Steve Krem in seventh place. And look at Sebastian Coe there. Checking where Ovid is, and Ovid's watching him all the way. But this is the strike we want to see. Can they outsprint each other? Which one is the faster? Ovid in the pulling position, coming up to attack. There'll be no waves, I suspect, today to the crowd. And there goes Co. He's looking for Ovid, wondering where he is. He's right there behind him. And Ovid gathers himself on the near side. Straw with the far side. And could this be Ovid's first defeat? Ovid is in trouble. And Co gets the revenge he wants. It's Straub, third is over, fourth is Busser, fifth is Fontadella, sixth Plachi, seventh Marijo, eighth Cram, and in ninth place the Yugoslav. And what a comeback for Sebastian Coe. The man they write off totally. Hardly anyone would tip him for this race, but you don't become a bad athlete in a week. And Coe suddenly found Ovet's breaking point, and Ovet could do nothing about it. And Avet had the advantage of coming from the back as well. So, the arguments will go on. First, Ovet wins. And then, Sebastian Coe comes home flying high. Three years on, Helsinki, the World Championships. Ovet still battling, Coe absent and unwell. Cram taking on the mantle of the number one. Three and three quarter laps of the track, and the battle is on. Ovet comes across right from the outside. And on the inside, it's a bath car. And the Vista has not gone on as usual, and the pace looks fairly slow, so it's going to be tactical. I suspect, actually, in mid-race, Boyd will have to take it on because he won't have the finishing speed. So we've got a trot now for the first 200 metres. Nobody prepared for any sort of commitment. A bath car there, Dravkovic. Steve Ovet, where he always is, slow or fast, just off the shoulder of the leading peak. Brandon Foster. 
Well, it is very slow, but at least at the moment it's gent gentlemanly because they're not pushing and shoving each other and they're allowing each other a free run. And that's nice to see because we have been critical of that all week. But the, the early, this is, you know, when they run slowly like this in the early stages, their nerves gather, you know, they gather more nerves. And it's not until they start running freely that they lose those nerves. So they'll be as nervous now as, as they were when they were walking down that terrific tunnel. Well, very slow indeed on that first lap, 65 seconds. Abafka leads Ravkovic in second place. Third is Kubusta of Czechoslovakia. Fourth, Steve Ovet. In fifth place on the outside is Busser of East Germany. Right at the back, Mike Voigt. And in fact, it's uh, slower than the women were after one lap. Now the tall Czech, Kubista, goes in front. But he's not really live for the pace. Poita staying out of trouble wide in the rather faded green vest of Morocco and Boyd still at the back. Fram trying to find Rube on the curb. Coming up from the outside is Uwe Becker now, the West German champion. Kubista wins the lead rather. Two laps to go. And this is certainly being left very late to the very first men. Still Kubista as they approach 800 meters. Steve Cram off the curb now, and he needs to be. The attack surely will come from a long way up. 2-7 at 800 metres. Kubista beginning to run. Zrakovic in second place. Becker is third. Awita now goes through. Awita, the fastest man in the world, the point of the season, followed by Cram, followed by Scott, followed by Boyd. Steve Ovet lost his place temporarily. Boyd comes up on the outside. He's got most to lose by waiting for a short finish. And Steve Avet is boxed right on the inside towards next to back. A bad position at this stage. And very difficult to win from there. But he's trying to burst his way through. There's the bell. Awita leads. Cram second. Scott third. Abathgal four. Kapista five. Dravkovic six. Boyd is seven. And Avet trying to improve all the time. But the strike is on for home now. Awita, the Moroccan, leads. The tall, slender figure of Steve Graham in second place. Third is Steve Scott, the American record holder. In fourth place, Abathka. And Steve Avet trying to get through on the inside. He's in fifth place and he's got through. He was knocked off the track slightly, I think. And Graham hits the front very early, followed by Steve Scott. Has he got too soon? Steve Graham leading. Scott waiting to attack. A weaker in second place. Abathka third. Ovet. Abathka four. Ovet five. And Graham leading with Scott coming and Awita coming and Cram has got it, he's three yards clear, Cram leading and Scott closes but he won't catch him and Cram wins the world championship, Scott is second, Awita third, Obed four and Bathgal five. What a victory for the youngster, what a marvellous, marvellous win for this young man who now follows his win in the European Championship, the Commonwealth Championship by becoming at the age of 22, the champion of the world. Nineteen eighty-four, the Olympics, Los Angeles. Cram now the favourite to take Coe's 1500 metres title, but the champion the Olympics, was back. Final, and straight away, Coe goes into the lead, determined not to get boxed. As Sebastian Coe, Matarazzi of Italy, and also Alifa now, who was at uh, college with Seb at Loughborough. On the inside, Chisiri. Newcomer to the Kenyan team. So they're settling down. Halifa now leads for Sudan. In second place, Chisiri. Third is Matarazzi. Fourth is Ko. He won't be too happy in that box, I can tell you. Steve Scott on in the inside, two in fifth place. Abarth Gal is sixth. Steve Ovet is seventh. Graham right on the curb, two in about eighth place. Just a little bumping and banging at the back. Well, I think they'll be relieved that someone's took the pace on because... Steve Cram and Sebastian Coe were a bit concerned about who would set the pace. Steve, Steve Cram in the middle of the bunch there has said he won't leave it till the last 200 meters. He'll go before then. And I think Sebastian Coe will wait till the last 200 meters. And I think Steve Ovet, if he's strong enough, will also wait for a sprint finish. So it's a great question. Cram will probably attack 400 meters, four or 500 meters out. And Coe will probably wait. So I can see us, the medals going to our boys between Coe and Cram. Steve Scott taking it on. Alifa in second place. Sebastian Coe is third. 
58-8 for the first lap and Steve Scott has speeded it up slightly. It's Scott the American in front. Khalifa in second place. Sebastian Coe out of trouble in third. Graham has moved through to four. Bathgal is five. Tissier is six. Uh, the American number one at the moment is 5 7 Steve Ovet eight. They've got two laps to go now. And Scott. We've got the silver behind Graham at the World Championship is in front. Coming round to complete 800 metres. And the time, 156.81. And this is going to be a real test for the men who've run 800 metres as well as this 1500, because it's going to be a test of strength as well as speed. The Bath Gal, he saved himself for the 1500. So too did Steve Scott. It's Sebco in third place. Steve Cram is four. Steve Overt is five. Alifa six. Five is seven. Chisire eight. Bathgal, this dangerous Spaniard coming round now to the bell. Tracked by the Olympic champion Sebastian Coe. The world champions in third place, Steve Cram. Going four now, the world record holder, Steve Ovette. Britain two, three and four. With a lap to go, 2.39.05. And it's going to be a very fast time indeed. And Bathgal's really stretching and testing him. And Steve Ovette's dropped out. It's not surprising. The world record holder out. It's been a bad week for him. So, Ovet out, and now the two Britons in second and third place. The leader still a bath gal. Sebastian Coe in second place, and there goes the world champions, Steve Cram on the outside. The race really on now. Coe responds immediately. He's the Olympic champion. Can he do it again? Steve Cram in second place, champion of the world, follows it. And the battle between the two. It's going to be Britain one and two, unless somebody cracks hopelessly. And Coe comes away. Cram digs in. But Coe comes away to retain the Olympic title. Sebastian Coe, back at his best, is the Olympic champion again. Cram gets the silver, Pascal the bronze, Tissere next, Spivey next. And Coe, what a week of racing. And he's done what he did in Moscow four years ago. The silver in the 800, the gold in the 1500. 1985, no major games, but a year for Cram to dominate the stage again. 4-1 for the first lap, and they're looking for someone to take them through 800 metres at around 152. Fowl's getting worried because they're not following the pace. I don't think Steve Cram is anxious to follow the pace. He knows he's there to be shot at at the moment. He's got the big Brazilian breathing down his neck, Joaquin Cruz, and these two are looking around. Where's the company? And uh, it's closing up on them only because they're closing. And the time's coming to them. Awita gets himself buried there in sixth or seventh place. He almost had a trip earlier on. But the big Brazilian training Steve Cram at the moment, who looks as though he's running well and easy. No sign of the Cram muscle injury at all as they get two laps to go, Marker. Held out to them. And still foul lead. Salifa in second place. Cram is third. Cruz is four. In fifth place, Gonzalez of Spain. In sixth place, the tiny Moroccan and they threw 800 meters in 153.6 now Ovet in the world record was through in 151.67 so they're outside a world record pace it's still Khalifa now in front with Fala having dropped out still Cram in second place third Gonzalez of Spain in fourth place is Cruz looking threatening in fifth place Awita and sixth the many times American champion Steve Scott they're all gathering now as they come round to the bell. Alifa kicking very hard indeed. Graham still in second place and Cruz is in trouble. The Olympic 8 to be the champions beaten. Alifa attacks hard but so too does Graham and he's gone desperately early. Well, this is a really courageous bid by Steve Graham and as he judged it right. Gonzalez in second place, the weaker is not beaten yet, and he's closing, but Graham has kicked hard, he's seven metres clear, and the Olympic champion from Morocco is wallowing behind Graham at the moment, with just over 200 to go, but Graham lasting it out, the world champion, the European champion, the Commonwealth champion, can he hang off? The Olympic 5,000 metre champions closing now and encouraged by the gap, lessening, and Graham Battling away in front, and a weaker is coming on the near side. Graham responds again, 
for the Moroccan. Can Feely Bank get there? It's going to be so close. Drive with. Oh, the world record has gone. Steve Ozette, Steve has gone from the list to be replaced by, I believe, Steve Cram. The Commonwealth Games this year. Everyone waiting for the co cram confrontation again. But Co isn't ready. He's below par. He won't run. Cram has denied the meeting when his confidence is sky high. The stage now will be his alone. The ten go on their way. That went quickly into his running, and Cram, as usual, drops out of the back to keep out of trouble. An almost run into Campbell's spikes. No one really wants to uh, make the pace. Well, when Steve Cram arrived at the stadium, he saw how strong the wind was blowing. He thought, he said to me then that uh, he felt as though it would be a race like Brisbane where nobody was prepared to take the pace on. And this is almost playing into his hands and really it would be very difficult to do anything about the pace in these conditions. But you feel as though there are some people in the race who won't do anything unless they have a sustained pace. And I know it's windy, but we saw last week in the 10,000 meters that okay, the overall time is slower if you take it on in the wind. But if you don't, you're just playing in the hands of the big kickers and they're not all big kickers in this race. Crowd turret clearly don't right, like what they're seeing. There was a slow hand tap then. But of course, these boys are racing for a championship. There's no question of pace making here. This is not an invitation meeting. They're running for a title. And it's all about racing and tactics. Elhard of Australia leading, reluctantly. Rob Harrison in second place. Gladwin third. Horsfield four. Burke five. Scammell six. John Robson seven. Steve Martin eight. Crown nine. Campbell ten. 68 seconds for the first lap. Wind very strong. They're into it now in the uh, in the back straight. It's just starting to rain quite heavily. Australia leading. England second. Wales third. England four. That's going of Australia five. Steve Martin of the Green of Ireland in sixth place. Cram still waiting, and the race is made for Cram, really, because he's the 800 metre title holder. He's the fastest man in the field. He's right at the back at the moment. If someone really made a break now, it could be quite interesting because there's no way out of, without a struggle for Steve Cram. Two laps to go. You can just see them gathering up, and I mean, someone's going to have to release a run soon because uh, they're playing very much into Steve Cram's hands. I think they've all given up the gold medal, but I think it's all about who's going to get the silver and bronze. And I think there's chances if Rob Harrison stays well in that position and John Gladwin right behind him, it could be Cram's prediction of England 1, 2, and 3. Almost two minutes, 16 seconds at the halfway. Elhard Australia leading, and the rain pouring down. Uh, Cram's uh, now beginning his move. He's getting clear of trouble, but inevitable bunching with the slow pace, and the race has begun. Steve Martin now, the Haringey athlete who runs for Northern Ireland, alongside Hillhart, the Australian record holder and champion. John Gladwin of England moves up, clear of trouble at Martin's shoulder, the right place to be. Also getting out of trouble is Rob Harrison. Graham still waits at the back, still keeping clear of everyone, and comes very wide down the finishing straight, and John Gladwin is gone. Now, has he caught Graham? He's got an awful lot to do now. He's about 12 metres clear, by the of Cram, at least 12, perhaps 15. And Cram was caught asleep. Gladwin with just over 300 to go, and Cram now has got to work very, very hard indeed. But look at him go. The challenge is there, but he's having to work desperately hard to catch the other Englishman. But John Gladwin finding that win, so punishing, you can see him almost leading back. The strike shortening, and the champion is back in the race and surely going to win the title once more. Steve Cram comes right from the back, but Gladwin hanging on in second place. England one and two, and Campbell of Canada in third place at the moment, and Steve Cram high steps his way to yet another gold medal and successfully defends the Commonwealth title. John Gladwin takes the silver, Campbell the surprise bronze, Rob Harrison fourth, Fifth place Scammell. Uh, fifth place rather Burke. Sixth is Scammell who gets married tomorrow. And uh, just behind him was Steve Martin. The time for the last lap. An incredible 51.4. And a nice piece of enterprise by John Gladwin.
And so to Stuttgart, Co is back, but he's being written off. Cram is buoyant. He's the man of the moment. But in the heat of the 800, it might have been Moscow or Los Angeles all over again. Co had that steely-eyed look. Cram had strolled through to the final as well, but in his mind, the doubt might have been there. He'd never beaten Co in a major games. Co has never looked more relaxed. He's fit. He's well. He's ready to make his point once more. And so on Thursday of this week, the entry of the Gladiators. Co, whose world record at the distance is one of the most respected in the sport, gets his major 800 title, as you'll see. He's off as we expected fairly quickly to make sure his position. Also going very, very fast is Pater Braun of West Germany. Braun has gone off very, very positively indeed. So are they going to make this a fast one and a true test, or will it turn into a tactical race? Graham in his familiar position at the back, keeping out of trouble. Coe is boxed, got in his worst place there. He's had to check back. And already the field's strung out. There's some 10, 12 metres. Brown leading. Dropper's in second place. Collard is third. Kalink in four. Tom McKean got a knock there from Cram. And the British getting in each other's way. The muscular McKean goes through, though, into third place. Kalinkin follows him. Peter Brown approaching the bell. Leading for West Germany, Dropper's second, McKean third, Collard four, Kalinkin five. Cram and Co next to back, and the time fast inside 52. Oh, and they've got another knock then. Cram now has got out of trouble. Some bumping at the back. Still Brown leading, Dropper's second, McKean third, Ostrowski four, Collard five. Cram making his move down the back straight. Co goes through behind him. And Cram very, very wide, so too is Co and McKean. Bidding for gold, but there goes Cram on the outside with less than 200 left. And Co follows, and McKean is fighting back. Britain one, two, and three. Cram, McKean, and here comes Co. A dramatic move on the outside by Sebastian Co. Can this be his first title? Cram appears to be beaten, and Co means to make this his. Sebastian Co wins at last. McKean is second. Cram is third. Gold, silver, and bronze. And Co has done what he's always wanted to do. He's won the major 800 title he wanted. 144 5 1, doesn't matter a bit. He got it right. Co does his stuff when it matters. An absolutely brilliant run. A great day. Cram makes no excuses. The turbocharge simply didn't fire when he stepped on the gas. It happens in middle distance running.